the fifth kind. The extent that the secrecy has subverted uh, the governments around the world in a way that most people can't imagine. This thought-provoking program is brought to you in association with Gaia.com. Follow the links to unlock the entire Gaia library. Dr. Stephen Greer has been investigating UFO phenomena for several decades. His work can be seen in documentaries such as Unacknowledged and the popular Gaia series Disclosure, featured in this video. In this series, Dr. Greer documents many startling revelations into the covert operations of the UFO cover-up, exposing the underground military-industrial complex, a shadow organization secretly conducting black-budget ops and unacknowledged special access projects. It is highly compartmentalized and operated on a strictly need-to-know basis. Many military officials, high-ranking politicians, and even presidents have been denied access to investigate these clandestine programs. The technologies are way beyond your imagination that are human technologies that have been developed over the last 70, 75 years. And that those technologies are, have been used for uh, counterintelligence purposes to deceive the public, or what I call the stagecraft of uh, the UFO issue. Most people don't understand how well developed the technologies are in the electromagnetic sciences and the biological sciences that have been used to create false flag UFO appearing events that are actually choreographed by the IC, the intelligence community or operatives in, in the MAGIC, Majority Intelligence Committee. That's probably been the most shocking part of it. And then the deep drill down on that would be what are those uh, operational, deployable technologies. I think that's been the, the biggest worry that I've had. When I was first uh, briefed on some of these technologies in the early 90s, I really didn't believe it until I had multiple independent points of corroboration from scientists and folks who worked in various companies, E-Systems, EGNG, SAIC, Lockheed Skunk Works, etc., that that would even be possible, that there would be that level of development of technological capability. And I'm not talking about free energy and zero point and anti-grav, I'm talking about way beyond that. And, and that those have been used in the public and on victims in the public you know, to simulate ET events as alien, which aren't. So that, that I think, when I discovered that in 93, 94, 95, I became extremely concerned about the human future because that meant that we were all sitting ducks because we didn't know. If we know, we can't be deceived. This is why a show like this is so important. Because if people know, knowledge is power. And uh, it's, it's very important for people to have that knowledge. If people don't know, then something could occur that would absolutely look like it was an alien event. But it wouldn't be. And I remember meeting with a man who was uh, an electromagnetics genius back in the 50s, 60s. And he was, when I met him in the, in the uh, early 90s, he was probably mid 80s. And he had invented some systems for uh, electromagnetic augmentation or assisted remote viewing. And of course, everyone thinks remote viewing is, is only being done through the programs that you see, you know, like that Russell Targ was involved with or SRI or but the really, that, that's one compartment, and that's really not unacknowledged. The unacknowledged special access project level of remote viewing involves electromagnetic systems that assist. But those systems were also weaponized, meaning that they could be turned around into systems that affect people's, uh, what they're experiencing. And this man explained to me that, uh, that, that they could target somebody 
to have an experience. It would seem like almost, uh, let's call it an electronically induced hallucinogenic experience. That that person, if and I'm, I'm going to quote here, he said, if we want you to have a personal conversation with your personal God, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, whoever it is, you'll have it, you'll think it's real, and you will pass a lie detector test that it happened. That's how good it is. So those were developed in the 50s. This man had developed this one particular system in 1956. A lot of people don't appreciate this enormous amount of research and development that happened. It started in the early 20th century and then continued on and was potentiated in the 40s and 50s, dealing with electromagnetic fields. And then those were then applied into different areas. So the general public that follow this subject know a lot about, oh, well, there's been quote unquote free energy zero point or, or magnetic flux field generation systems that have been suppressed, which is true. There have been uh, anti-gravity, pop culture term, it's actually electromagnetogravitics that cause mass cancellation, things to lift and levitate and move around uh, that have been experimented with, including all the way back into the time of Hitler. But before that, I mean, T. Townsend Brown in the 20s right. was using very high voltage systems and crystalline materials and things levitating the Koloski Frost experiment in the late 20s in Germany. So, you know, we're talking now almost 90 years of this kind of, of experimentation with ver various field propulsion electromagnetic systems and that have become highly classified and or at the same time debunked and sanitized out of academia, MIT and Caltech and what have you. But in these unacknowledged special access projects, there, there is a, uh, let's call them a boutique collection of technologies that have to do with electromagnetic systems that are consciousness and mind interface that can both induce experiences or augment experiences or suppress experiences. And while everyone's heard of MKUltra, the notorious CIA project that was using LSD and all kinds of mind control stuff, the Senator Ch Church hearings did not touch on this area because that never came out. This is a much deeper, unacknowledged special access project level. And those technologies in the hands of people with malice aforethought and the, the intent to deceive and counterintelligence <clears throat> is truly a dangerous situation. I mean, that's, that's a situation that can lead to um, all kinds of, of, of people having an experience that is where they're a victim of uh, the agenda for people to become terrified of all things alien. And a lot of people think that, oh, well, that we don't have that, but we do have it. So I think that's probably the most disturbing and shocking part of the technologies that I learned about. I mean, there's the policy part of it where I realized there was a decapitation of, of governments around the world on this issue. Uh, because of these deep secret uh, government and, and corporate programs that are, let's call them transnational, meaning they're not international in the sense of normal international relations. They transcend geopolitical boundaries and they're everywhere. They're in Russia, they're in China, they're in the UK. And, and they cooperate, even the darkest days of the Cold War. USAP programs dealing with this had uh, cooperative elements within the USSR, China, uh, you, you know, and certainly the United Kingdom, uh, the G7 countries, et cetera, and so on. And, and that isn't going through the normal State Department or UN diplomatic, which is international. This is transnational. So that was, that was one area that was a very shocking to me, which is more policy, law, constitution. The scientific part of it that was shocking to me was not that there could be zero point energy or that there could be uh, breakthroughs in propulsion systems that would lead to so-called anti-gravity and what have you. It, it was the weaponization of these uh, electromagnetic sciences uh, and then them being applied in uh, what is called, the proper term in, in, the, in the military is a deceptive indication and warning or a false indication and warning, which is a false flag. And a lot of people say, oh, well, there's this, you know, it, when is that going to happen? I went, it started in 1955. In his deathbed confession, Von Braun 
warned of a plot to pull off the ultimate false flag, using back-engineered alien reproduction vehicles to stage an invasion from outer space. When Von Braun was dying in front of me the very first day that I met him, the strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. The last card is the alien card. And all of it, he said, is a lie. A lie. It's all about controlling what the narrative is that people believe about who we are, who the extraterrestrial civilizations are, what the future of, of the human species is. This is a narrative and that was very much planned out and has and has been worked and gone through various iterations of, of development since from the 50s till now. But they have assets, let's, let's call them technological assets, that can augment and facilitate deception and this reality. Sort of, and reality. Uh, and we're, not, we're talking uh, very advanced electromagnetic warfare systems. And, and it's, it's easy to understand once you understand the brain is electrical, it's essentially a, a plasma. And so you can use a plasma and electromagnetic radiation to literally manipulate the brain completely. Well, in 1991, I wrote a paper called The Comprehensive Assessment of the UFO, ETI, extraterrestrial intelligence subject. This went through the entire aerospace and CI community unbeknownst to me. And I had an aerospace engineer call me up and he said, Dr. Greer, this is the most accurate description of this issue any of us have ever read. How do you know this? And I didn't tell him well, I had a contact when I was 18 with the, these civilizations and had had since. But I, I said, well, a lot of it is inductive, deductive, and research and what have you. That was in 91. That's in the first book I re referred to, Extraterrestrial Contact, Count the Evidence and Implications. And uh, I know we live in an era where no one reads anymore, but I think that paper is actually up on our website. And, and in it, I describe consciousness-assisted technologies, okay, and technology-assisted consciousness. So in, interstellar civilizations have technologies where they can put their consciousness and assist the system for navigation, for guidance, for communication. Almost as if the ships are organic or something. They are. Yeah. So an actual ET craft is a, a bio nano conscious AI level machine. And the intelligence and consciousness of the uh, commander or the occupants is uh, actually is projected through the craft. So a lot of people have had contact with these and they feel like the craft itself was conscious and was conveying information, not just the occupants. I say, yes, it is because it's seamless. No, a, a fighter pilot chasing one of them said that it, w it acted more like an animal than it did a machine. He said the way it darted and played with him and yeah, well, and, and when they have been down through electromagnetic weapon systems starting back in the 40s, uh, Roswell, the big uh, canard uh, is that, oh, well, you know, you're going through inter interstellar space and you can't navigate an electrical storm outside Roswell. It's nonsense. Uh, re uh, one thing everyone needs to remember, the term radar is a euphemism used in unacknowledged special access projects to have a system that's sitting there and inside that dome or inside that dish are electronics that are very advanced, way beyond radar systems that you're sending off a beam and bouncing off a metallic object that are weaponized and can uh, disrupt the electronics and the guidance and the navigation systems of an interstellar vehicle. So all these, you know, this what Lynn Stringfield called this crash retrieval that you hear about all over the world, those things aren't coming into our atmosphere and running out of gasoline, all right? They have been targeted with weapons that are on satellites in space, in the oceans, on the ground, and on airborne aircraft. And those have gone through many generations of development. And that was the other part of this that really upset me. Because I realized that there was an unacknowledged, uh, dangerous, uh, and stupid military response to these extraterrestrial civilizations that luckily they were very restrained. If they were not restrained, 
we would be done. Trust me. I mean, you know, if you're talking about the ability to go across the distances of space-time uh, trans-dimensionally, you know, and, and back in the 40s and 50s, we have vacuum tubes and, and stuff like this. If there wasn't an, an enormous level of restraint and, frankly, enlightenment on the part of these civilizations, we would have been done a long time ago. But we have continued to develop these electromagnetic weapon systems. Uh, over the last 70 years, and they are on multiple levels of generations. And, and in fact, I just had a meeting with a man who had uh, spent 10 years in the technology management office in the sub-basement of the Pentagon, and uh, he was read into a project over at, uh, down in the Marshall Space Flight Center area uh, that had uh, satellite systems that uh, were in space that had electromagnetic weapon systems on them that could quote unquote obliterate anything in space. Very dangerous. Now, you know, of course, in violation of all treaties and what have you, and these are unacknowledged systems. So, you know, when people talk about having a space force, I'm not even sure a president has been read into the fact that those systems are there and that they're being used in this way. But that creates an existential threat to the entire planet, that we have people who are have those sort of technologies and they're using them in that way, in a way, manner that is not being supervised, disclosed to the public, and that the wise, let's call them the wise elders amongst us on the planet, have input in. Because this is the danger of, of hermetically sealed secret systems. There's no give and take. There's no feedback. It's not an open system. It's a closed system. And so these closed systems with these sort of technologies running amok without any restraint is itself a threat to the human future. Dr. Greer believes that the information being withheld is of such importance that if it was ever leaked, the world would change within a generation. And that this developed, classified technology has the potential to solve humanitarian, energy, and climate-based crisis on a global scale. At the same time, the release of such technologies would destroy many multi-billion dollar industries and corporations. It would facilitate humanity with the means to become self-sufficient, away from a system of financial governance and control. So for that reason, among others, it remains buried within a maze of secrecy. Thank you for watching The Fifth Kind. We hope you enjoyed this thought-provoking program brought to you in association with Gaia.com. To see more documentaries, interviews, and original shows, follow your curiosity and visit our all-new featured episodes portal at Gaia.com forward slash portal forward slash the fifth kind. If you like our work and you'd like to know whenever we publish our latest videos, it's really important that you click the bell icon and turn on channel notifications just next to the subscribe button. Also, please like and share this video and help make sure this type of content stays around and is available for others who may be seeking it.